talk briefly about what you can do for stage one, which is approximately $150 and really will firm up your shifts. First, you're going to install a trans cooler, and I have an episode on how to do that. So take a look at my other videos and you'll see it in there. Second, you're going to actually drop the transmission pan down and you will see the valve body assembly, which I have sitting right here. And you're going to see a little dial on the driver's side. And that dial can be turned to the third setting. The third setting increases the line pressure to the valve body and thus to the transmission and firms up shifts just slightly. It decreases wear on your transmission and decreases heat, which in turn increases the life of your transmission. And finally, since you're dropping the pan down anyway, there is a filter or what's actually called a strainer bolted with four bolts up to the bottom of this valve body assembly. It's only 20 bucks. It comes with a trans pan gasket and three new gaskets that are on the back side of that strainer. So for just 20 bucks, you can have a whole new strainer assembly. I think it's a worthwhile maintenance item to do if you're going to drop the pan down anyway. Let's take a closer look at the valve body assembly and what you're going to see when you drop that pan down. This is the valve body assembly as it sits in your transmission bolted up into it. So it's sitting here in this video exactly as it would be sitting if you were under the vehicle. Obviously I've removed it, but you don't need to remove it for the stage one modifications I'm going to talk about. So this is the passenger side here, the back side, and of course the driver's side. The line pressure adjustment is on the driver's side and you do not need to drop the valve body down for this. You've probably heard about it. This is the dial adjuster right here and it increases the line pressure or decreases the line pressure depending on which way you go. I do not recommend decreasing it. From the factory it'll be in the center position typically unless someone's messed with it. You want it to be in the position shown. That would be called the third position. Let's take a closer look at that. When you push that in and turn it clockwise, it'll go to that third position. That will increase your line pressure across the board and it will decrease the heat and wear on your transmission. So if you read anything that says that it caused transmission failure for someone, their transmission was gonna fail anyway. This, if anything, will actually increase the life of your transmission. I ran it for about 25 to 30,000 miles before I did my valve body modification and I had zero issues. I recommend turning that dial and getting the Duralast strainer kit. I'll show you where that mounts. The strainer will be fully accessible underneath the vehicle when you drop the pan and it will be sitting right here. Four bolts hold it in. They actually look like this pretty easy to remove and then you just when you put it back in you want to torque them to seven foot-pounds that strainer comes with new gaskets that mate with these surfaces here I'm actually going to leave this overnight, so I think I'll just go ahead and open it up and let it drain out. It's good to do this into an empty container because then you can pour it into a marked container and see how much fluid actually came out. I'm going to run it back in just so that it doesn't leak all over. There's a couple things worth noting here. Uh, one, I previously dropped this pan for the line pressure mod where you turn the dial to three. And that means that this is a lot easier to take off this time around. Uh, one thing is there's this little cross brace that goes across here and you can see I cut this that off last time because I simply could not get this pan back on properly. 
That's why this is gone. And the reason is because these are fused together. I couldn't get them broken loose off the catalytic converters. So you'll probably have a brace that goes across here and you might have to deal with that. Uh, the other thing worth noting is if you pull the transmission dipstick out, it'll be a little easier to pull because to pull this off because this hard line goes up in there to that dipstick area. As you can see, you gotta watch it. This stuff just starts pouring out of here. Man, I hate working under the car like this, but you can see the valve body starting to make an appearance up in there. No. You got not there. See how much fluid there still is? It's there's just so much. I'll have to put a new washer on that. There we go. And you want to leave your drip pan under this valve body and transmission because it's still dripping. That is your valve body assembly. You can see the filter assembly here. And I'm gonna replace that. The problem is, is when you take this off, the filter assembly, the factory service manual says that you need to replace the three gaskets that are on the back side of this, and I'll show you those. And instead of replacing those three gaskets, uh, you can get a whole filter assembly for under $20. And then when you get the pan out, guys, you wanna take a look at the magnets that are already in there, and you wanna look and see what kind of shavings you have on there, and that will tell you what type of wear you have on your transmission, if any. So at this point, one thing that's really good to do is you can actually remove these. They're just stuck right to the pan. So you can see they collect crud and you wanna kinda of take a look at them and see, get a clean rag and wipe it out. And then they're gonna go right back into these spots. So, kind of nasty. This is, of course, the transmission pan gasket. And this was, normally it's form in place gasket. So this one here is gonna be removed and I'm going to replace it with a new one. And that is another reason that getting a new filter assembly is actually a good idea because they come with these usually. So you not only get a new filter and the three gaskets that are on the back side of the filter, but you get a new pan gasket. And I recommend going with a new, oh wow, forgot that one. Good thing I checked. I recommend going with a new gasket over the form and place gasket. It says in the factory service manual that a bunch of fluid is going to come out. So I'm really looking forward to that. Next. I suggest you put your hand up there. And it's probably going to want to come down. Let's see. Yep. Okay, here comes the fluid. Yeah, there we go. This is what the oil strainer looks like from the, I'm gonna call it top side that mates to the transmission. So these are the three gaskets that the factory service manual says to replace. So if you wanna reuse your assembly, you probably should go ahead and pick up these gaskets. Now I talked to IPT on the phone and they said what you wanna look for is degradation of these gaskets where they start to kind of fall apart. I don't know. I mean, these look okay to me, but while we're in here, why not spend the $20 to just get a new filter assembly? It might be difficult to see, but inside of this is a screen and I do see some particulates on it. I don't know if it's going to show up on the GoPro here, but there's definitely particulates on the underside of that screen or top side. And if I flip this thing over, that's where the big screen is. And I don't know how a bunch of fluid's gonna come out, but so right here is the main primary screen and there's not much on there, but I do see a few little bits and pieces of things. So really, 
My attitude is, why not replace it? And I'm gonna go ahead and set it up there. We go. I used a Felpro gasket that was provided to me when I bought this valve body. And the filter kit also came with one. And I find that it's easy to run a couple fasteners up through it to keep it aligned. I have a couple of them in, one in the front and one in the back. And now what I'm doing is I'm simply wiggling this thing around to get it made it up to that surface. And at the same time, plugged into that darn filler up there the filler is the problem. <clears throat> this hard line for the filler can be a real pain. So get a couple of these going and start it. If you can get it lined up, that'll really help you with this. I'm gonna go ahead and get the drill, put it on a real low setting and run them all in. I'm just running them in. You're gonna take a torque wrench and go 65 inch pounds with it. I'm just running them real easy right now because there's 19 of them. Torque to 65 inch pounds. Okay, all torqued. Everything's on. Dipstick is engaged. Hard line is engaged. So next, I need to put back in my wide band, start filling it up. Look over everything, wipe things down. Make sure things are looking good. If you did use the FIPG form in place gasket, there is a setup time. I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't say it in the factory service manual, so you need to double check that. Now, if you used a gasket like I did, especially a fiber one from Felpro, you can actually drive the vehicle right away, which is a huge benefit. Easiest way to do this is to put your fluid through the dipstick hole and I use a double funnel system but you got to be sure that you don't pour it too fast because what will happen is is it'll get into the dipstick hole and spill up and out from where the funnel is inserted it works actually fairly well you just have to be patient and don't pour it too fast and just watch it Okay, that part's done. I'm gonna take another look under the vehicle and then I'll start lowering it down if everything looks all right. Stage one, my recommendations are trans cooler, dial adjustment for line pressure to three, and replace the strainer with a Duralast uh, strainer, which actually comes with a trans oil pan gasket as well for under $20 US. That would be stage one. Stage two will be a complete valve body upgrade, which I have done, and I will talk about that in my next video. I appreciate you joining me. I hope this modification helps you out and helps your transmission to last even longer. See you on the next one.